gonna, we're just gonna cut to the video. We're not even, we're not even gonna get to this part. Joker. Anyway, greetings and salutations. What can I say? I truly can't stay away. It's just the fangirl within me. It's just the gift that keeps on giving. So the time has come to finally deliberate over the Joker 2 trailer, and I could not be more thrilled to discuss the madness of two. And as promised, Todd is back at the head of this, and with a different tune this time around, and it's a musical, and I love it. Which, after talking to a couple friends of mine and realizing that not a lot of people are gonna like the fact that this is a musical, especially for more comic book enthusiasts, they're not gonna wanna sit through two hours plus of two characters singing about their own delusions. I personally believe that Todd Phillips and Lauren Cher, among many collaborations of directors, writers, and cinematographers past, which is a very select group of people, know how to tell a story through each and every single facet of a film. As much as I usually make fun of films for having the annoying blue filter, I gotta say they at least have some fun with it. There's this interesting usage of red and green throughout the entire trailer, even in the lighting. Harley, for example, forms one of the bright spots in Arthur's psyche, and the entire time you see a blooming of colors whenever she's around and whenever there's not blue filter. Whether it's on screen or pregnant through the dialogue or even embedded in the music, they got this thing in the bag. I'm, I'm not worried. And even if you haven't listened to Lady Gaga's music, you can't lie and say that she's not a triple threat. Like every film person has probably already seen A Star Is Born. Come on. <laughs> if you told me that Lady Gaga had like some other skill set, trained dogs to circus tricks, I would believe it because what else can she not do? <laughs> and I can grant Joaquin Phoenix that title as well because I think initially he wasn't gonna do this project, that or he was protecting the announcement of this project, which Good on him. Now, I've only seen a clip of Joaquin Phoenix singing during his iteration as Johnny Cash. For Joaquin Phoenix, he has a very specific voice. He just doesn't seem like he can sing, but he does. So that must show that he has a lot of range. I'm hoping, that's the only thing I'm concerned about, that it works out. And the fact that this is a musical, we're just going further and building off of where we left off in the last film. Part of Arthur's story was that he and his neighbor shared a love for one another and the crowd at comedy clubs were granting him praise and people celebrated him because he was funny. As we realize, not a single thing of this is true. Then again, we still have a whole bunch of Joker sympathizers that are crowding around him because of what he represents to them. Downtrodden and othered by the rich society of Gotham. And it's not even until the end of the first movie that he begins to embrace it for better or worse. In that case, the spotlight continues to shine on him. We might even get some further development on some of the doors that it opened up. Certain aspects of the story is not reliable with Arthur as the one who tells his own tale. But now we have Joker 2, which is two people running around in Delulu land and completely oblivious to anything else that is happening around them. In Arthur's time of living between four padded walls in Arkham Asylum, he is awaiting trial. And in the meantime, he meets Harley, who is not a psychiatrist this time around. She's actually her own mental head case, free being dunked into a vat of acid. I am firmly in the camp of there is always a way where you can tell the same story, but in a new way. Not because the times demand you to do so, but because you can see a way it can evolve from its roots, not against it. And I say this because I feel like a lot of films and shows fail at this because they're trying to constantly compete with the here and now, but it doesn't need to do that. Harley still carries over the hesitation towards pursuing a relationship with a Joker, but is also fascinated by the things that he's done as per the last movie. She's walking up the fame steps that he has danced down as a nobody, almost shadowing him in this regard. Ultimately, the change is that she's the one to manipulate Arthur into leaning into the more Joker persona because she gets some gratification also from being in the spotlight or in association with him. Kind of like how dance moms tend to relive their childhood through the children they coach. I just find it just a little suspicious because Arthur is constantly behind bars. He's the one that is riding in the backseat of a cop car on his way to the courthouse in civilian clothes. Meanwhile, Harley's already at the courthouse strutting her stuff, doing a whole runway walk in her own persona and nobody's stopping her. She's literally parting the crowd like it's the Red Sea. Arthur compared to other iterations that we've seen of the Joker is more akin to a petulant child prone to emotional outbreaks and susceptible to ideas of grandeur. However, seeing this couple dance and perform through these large set designs that look constantly like cardboard cutouts is the most interesting way to kind of depict their ideas of reality versus spectacle. Especially when we get the clip of Joker and Harley at the rooftop of a hotel and they're dancing away their sorrows and misery. But a lot of people are saying that it echoes La La Land. To me, I'm reminded of the 1989 Batman where Jack Nicholson kidnaps Vicki Vale and they're dancing through this gothic construction site that's abandoned. And he's, you know, uttering the lines over and over every time he kills somebody throughout the movie. You ever dance with the devil in the pale moonlight? That might not be so good for Harley. At least we'll maybe get like Arthur Fleck as a gangster persona. Maybe he'll have a backbone for one. Or maybe it's no good for Arthur. I'm just playing around. I have expected there to be a bang to come out of that end of the gun, but it's just a theory. 
Misty Mappat. He's not dead. He's just, <laughs> he's just retired. And maybe that's the fate of Twisted Madness where one of them ends up dying and the other's persona continues to grow and continues to be a destructive force within the society that's presented before them. I don't see this franchise having a third sibling, but accidents do happen. And who would Warner Brothers be if they didn't capitalize on the best franchise they have going for them right now? All this to say that the only thing we know that's going on is that trial is happening, love is blooming, music is hitting, destruction is at an all time high, and it's all coming out on my birthday month. What a time to be a Libra. But what did you guys think of the Joker 2 trailer? Comment down below along with your theories and inquiries and I'll respond to them as soon as possible. Be sure to like if you enjoyed this video and subscribe if you want more nerdy and quirky content. Links in the description below for other content and social media because fun stuff happens there sometimes. Anyway, I hope you guys have a lovely day and I'll see you guys on the flip side.